Welcome back to Harbour Unbox. Today, I'm comparing the GeForce GTX 1080 Ti head to head with the RTX 2070 Super and RX 5700 XT in 39 games. I was just one game shy of making it 40. But anyway, 39 will do. So, many of you have been asking me how the 1080 Ti stacks up against the current generation mid-range GPUs. Don't want to trigger too many people by calling the 2070 Super and the 5700 XT mid-range, but anyway, if we have to give them some sort of classification, let's just go with mid-range for now. So yeah, you've been asking how they stack up against these GPUs and should you consider buying one second hand? So before this video is over, I plan to answer both those questions, but before that, Today's video sponsor is NordVPN, and right now they're offering Harbour Unbox viewers 75% off a three-year membership when you use the link in the video description. And that works out to be just $2.99 per month, which in my opinion is a very small price to pay for your internet security, allowing you to browse, download, and shop safely. Hardware Unbox gets bombarded with advertising opportunities from VPN services, and to date NordVPN is the only company we've worked with and that's for good reason. It's the only service we use and trust. I've tried a number of different services and they all came up short for one reason or another, but I can honestly say NordVPN is the best I've found and having been a customer for well over a year now, I highly recommend you check them out. NordVPN also offers a free 30 day money back guarantee. So start protecting your internet experience today with 75% off a three year plan by using code Harbor Unboxed at nordvpn.com forward slash Harbor Unboxed. Link is in the video description. Okay, so let's quickly talk about the graphics cards used. Representing the red team, we have the Power Color RX 5700 XT Red Devil. And then for the green team, we have the MSI RTX 2070 Super Gaming X Trio, along with the MSI GTX 1080 Ti Gaming X Trio. Our standard GPU test rig has also been used and it comprises of an Intel Core i9 9900K clocked at five gigahertz with 16 gigabytes of DDR4 3400 memory. And all of this is installed inside the Corsair Crystal 570X. Finally, all testing takes place at the 1440p and 4K resolutions. For all 39 graphs, please visit the link in the video description. That'll take you over to our Patreon page and you can view them all there for free. Of course though, towards the end of the video, we will have a few of those big performance breakdown graphs comparing all the data we have. So let's get into the results. First up, we have Gears 5 and we have some pretty strange results. Though having said that, the game has just been released, so there's no doubt a bit of driver development still to come. As it stands, at 1440p, the 1080 Ti dominated the 2070 Super and 5700 XT, and we see that both the newer GPUs averaged 76 FPS, while the Pascal GPU pushed out an average of 88 FPS. Yet despite that, we see pretty much the same results across the board at 4K, though oddly here, the 1080 Ti offers the worst 1% low performance. Still, all three average just over 60 FPS, and that's damn impressive given how great this title looks. Control is another new addition to our battery of benchmarks, but this one seems to be quite unoptimized, or well, very unoptimized at this point in time. All three GPUs fail to average more than 60 FPS at 1440p, so that's pretty horrible. The game looks good, but not amazing though, and certainly not good enough to justify the level of performance that we're seeing here. So for now, at least, Control looks to be a real FPS pig. Next up, we have War Thunder, and here the 1080 Ti edged out the 2070 Super by a 13% margin at 1440p, though both did deliver a similar 1% low result. The 1080 Ti also blew away the 5700 XT by a 34% margin, and we see a similar thing at 4K, despite comparable 1% low performance. World of Tanks plays very well on the GTX 1080 Ti. Here the Pascal GPU was 15% faster than the 2070 Super and 24% faster than the 5700 XT. So that's a solid result for the old 1080 Ti, though frame rates were quite high on all three GPUs at 1440p using the maximum in-game quality settings. The 4K results are more impressive, 94 FPS on average for the 1080 Ti, and this enabled an extremely smooth gaming experience. The GeForce GPUs are a little stronger in the Division 2. The 1080 Ti, for example, was 13% faster than the 5700 XT at 1440p and 15% faster at 4K. The 1080 Ti also edged out the 2070 Super at 1440p, but matched it at the 4K resolution. Interestingly, both the 5700 XT and 2070 Super comfortably beat the 1080 Ti in Counter-Strike Global Offensive. But given the very high frame rates, it's hard to say how much it even matters. 
I also doubt many play this title at 4K, but if you do, you can still expect over 200 FPS with any one of these GPUs. Recently, the RTX series saw a rather massive 20-30% to performance uplift in Forza Horizon 4 with the latest driver. However, there has been no performance uplift for the Pascal GPUs, and as a result, the 1080 Ti still trails the 5700 XT, at least at 1440p. The results are more competitive at 4K, and here the 1080 Ti matched the 5700 XT and wasn't a great deal slower than the 2070 Super. Something I've noticed quite a bit is how the older Pascal GPUs perform really well in older titles, or at least titles with dated game engines. Here we see the 1080 Ti outclassing both the 2070 Super and 5700 XT at both tested resolutions, and at 4K it was 14% faster than the 2070 Super, so that's a pretty handy win right there. Like Fortnite, PUBG uses the Unreal 4 engine, and again, we see the 1080 Ti easily beating the 5700 XT. That said, this time it wasn't much faster than the 2070 Super, only edging it out by 3 FPS at 1440p, though the margin did widen ever so slightly at 4K. Performance in F1 2019 was virtually identical across all three tested GPUs, with an average frame rate ranging from 112 to 114 FPS. The results at 4K were also very competitive. The GTX 1080 Ti matched the 5700 XT Exactly. Youngblood is a relatively new addition to the benchmark lineup, and this one plays very well on the newer Turing GPUs. That said, the 1080 Ti was just 10% slower than the 2070 Super, and when talking about over 140 FPS on average, I suppose that's not really a big deal. Still, the 1080 Ti was comparable to the 5700 XT at both 1440p and 4K. All three GPUs performed very well in Apex Legends, particularly at 1440p. The GTX 1080 Ti did beat the 5700 XT by a small margin, while it wasn't much slower than the newer RTX 2070 Super. Then at 4K, the GeForce GPUs delivered basically identical performance, while the 5700 XT fell away by around a 12% margin. For testing Rainbow Six Siege, I'm manually forcing a 100% render scale with TAA enabled. Here we see all three GPUs were able to average over 100 FPS at 1440p. The 1080 Ti and 5700 XT delivered similar 1% low performance, but the Pascal GPU was a little faster on average. When compared to the 2070 Super, the 1080 Ti was 8% slower, and we see a similar thing at the 4K resolution as well. Last game that we're going to look at closely before jumping into the 39 game breakdown is Monster Hunter World. Here we see very competitive performance at both tested resolutions. The 1080 Ti was a smidgen faster than the 2070 Super and 5700 XT, but overall the gaming experience was much the same. Now, just lastly, I'm going to look at power consumption. Some viewers often jump up and down when I don't include power and thermal information in these big head-to-head -head benchmarks, and the reason I don't do this is because power consumption figures don't change from the initial testing, and I refuse to include thermal data as that can vary quite significantly from one model to the next. Not all 2070 Super Graphics cards, for example, run at the same temperature, so check out each model individually. The same is also true of power consumption to a certain extent. Some models are more power hungry than others, but there is less of a discrepancy there. Anyway, when it comes to power consumption, the GTX 1080 Ti GPU consumes around 27% more power than the 2070 Super GPU, and around 35% more than the 5700 XT GPU. Now this time let's look at the entire board consumption, as well as the entire system. So basically we're just looking at the entire power draw from the wall. Here we see that the 1080 Ti consumed 15% more power than the 2070 Super and 12% more power than the 5700 XT. So while the newer GPUs are more efficient, it's not exactly gonna have a noticeable impact on the system. Okay, so as expected, the two-year-old flagship Pascal GPU still packs quite the punch and has no trouble keeping up with current performance mid-range options from AMD and Nvidia. That said, we've only looked at the results for about a dozen of the games that I tested, so I think it's time we see how they compare across all 39 games. 
here is how the GTX 1080 Ti stacks up against the 2070 Super. As you can see, the older Pascal GPU was 3% faster on average at 1440p. So overall, pretty similar performance, but we do see some fairly big differences when looking at individual games. The 1080 Ti, for example, was 16% faster in Gears 5, 15% faster in World of Tanks, and 13% faster in Quake Champions and War Thunder. It was also up to 10% slower in CSGO and Wolfenstein Youngblood, 9% slower in Forza Horizon 4, and 8% slower in Rainbow Six Siege. Of the 39 games tested, the margin was seen to be 10% or less in 32 of them. Then we saw a 5% margin or less in 19 of the games tested. So as the 3% difference on average suggests, for the most part, performance was very similar. Now, when compared to the Radeon RX 5700 XT, the GTX 1080 Ti was 9% faster on average at 1440p, and as that figure suggests, the GeForce GPU came out on top in significantly more titles. The outliers here include a 34% victory in War Thunder and 32% in Vermintide 2, while it was also quite a bit faster in World of Tanks and Metro Exodus. Unsurprisingly, the GeForce GTX 1080 Ti is still a very capable graphics card in 2019, so I'm sure that will surprise very few of you. But what many of you wanted this content piece to address was one of two things. Firstly, has Nvidia started to abandon Pascal with driver optimizations? Has the 1080 Ti begun to slip behind Turing-based GPUs, such as the RTX 2070 Super? The other question being, of course, should I buy a 1080 Ti, and if so, what price range should I be aiming for? Let's tackle the driver optimization first. I'm not gonna to get too much into the Nvidia gimping or nerfing performance of older generations as we've looked at this numerous times in the past and we've always found the claims to be bogus. Plus it just doesn't make sense that they would do that. Sure, at times we have seen driver bugs that hurt older generations as the focus is on getting the current generations up to speed and we saw this with Forza Horizon 4 as an example when it was first released, but Nvidia did end up getting those issues sorted out. Actually, Forza Horizon 4 is a good example here. Recently, from an updated driver, the RTX 2070 Super saw a 30% boost in our testing, while the 2080 Ti got a 0% boost. This means that upon release, the 2070 Super was 13% slower than the 1080 Ti in this title. Today, though, it is 10% faster. Now, is this an example of AMD abandoning optimizations for Pascal, or is it just an example of the Turing architecture being better utilized. I lean towards the latter, perhaps as an example, they have now been able to take better advantage of Turing's concurrent FP32 and INT32 execution. As the only example we have here, it's impossible to draw any real conclusions from this. What I can tell you is that upon release, the RTX 2070, so the non-super version that was released back in October of 2018, that was 17% slower than the GTX 1080 Ti in our day one review, which featured 20 games. We also know that on average, the 2070 is 12% slower than the 2070 Super. So the fact that the 1080 Ti is still 3% faster on average does seem about right. It's reasonable to expect some Turing optimization since release, and we have Forza as an example. So while the 2070 and 2070 Super will have closed in a little bit on the 1080 Ti, this certainly isn't evidence of any performance gimping. Okay, so enough about all that sort of stuff. Should you bother buying the GTX 1080 Ti in late 2019? Well, I guess, yeah, if the price is right. And looking at completing listings on eBay, we see that 1080 Ti's are currently selling for about $500 US, with the cheaper examples priced around $450 US. And I have to say, given all the fuss you guys make about used 1080 Ti's in the comments section, I was really expecting them to be much cheaper than they really are. Given you can buy a brand new 2070 Super for $510, saving $60 on a second hand and probably well used 1080 Ti doesn't seem like a smart investment. Moreover, you can snag a brand new 5700 XT for around $420 to $430 right now. So given the 1080 Ti was only 9% faster on average, paying a little more for a second hand model doesn't seem like it's worth it. Personally, given what we've seen here, there's no way I'd be paying more than $400 US for a used 1080 Ti. In fact, they'd really only start to tempt me at around $350. And here in Australia, you're looking at having to spend between $800 and $900 on a used 1080 Ti, which is absolute madness given you can purchase a brand new 2070 Super 
for as little as $910 or a 5700 XT for just $700. And I think on that note, we'll wrap this one up here. Big thank you to NordVPN for supporting this benchmark video. And of course, you guys, if you like the video, like, you can subscribe, do all that stuff. And if you really appreciate the work we do at Hiram Box, consider checking out our Patreon page. There's some pretty cool perks. Click the link in the video description. You can take a look at those. Anyway, thank you for watching. I'm your host, Steve. See you next time.